Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone who's joining us for our webinar today. We will go ahead and get started. My name is Amanda Kavnis and I'm the 2022 uh, chairperson of projects for YPG. And I'd like to thank you for joining us for the Career Development Toolkit Workshop Part One today. Um, currently, I serve as a pediatric hematology and oncology uh, clinical pharmacy specialist at Children's Hospital of the King's Daughters in Norfolk, Virginia. I completed my residency at Children's Hospital of the King's Daughters and then went on to complete a second year residency at Children's National Medical Center uh, before becoming a board certified pediatric pharmacy specialist um, and joining the team back at CHKD. Our objectives today are to understand the importance of self-directed career development, to describe the sections of the career development toolkit, to develop a personalized career development plan using the career development toolkit. With me today is my co-moderator, God's Gift Owendi. She is part of the 2022 Professional Development Committee. God's Gift is a graduate of pharmacy from the prestigious University of Port Harcourt, Nigeria. She's passionate about contributing immensely to public health and pharmacy profession in Nigeria and also globally. She has a passion for community service as evidenced by her volunteering work with various organizations such as Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, Young Pharmacists Group, International Pharmaceutical Students Federation, and International Pharmaceutical Federation Young Pharmacist Group. She's currently running her National Youth Service Program at the Pharmacist Council of Nigeria, Abuja, and is also the founder of a mentorship platform, a mentorship program called the P Platform for pharmacy students in Nigeria. She's well published in reputable international journals and her hobbies include traveling, volunteering, and cooking. So thank you God's gift for joining us today. We'll start with a brief overview about FIP and FIP YPG. What is FIP? We are a leader of pharmacy at the global level. Founded in 1912, the International Pharmaceutical Federation or FIP is the global federation of national associations representing millions of pharmacists, pharmaceutical scientists and pharmacy educators around the world. And it's a non-governmental organization that has been in official relations with the World Health Organization since 1948. The FIP vision is a world where everyone benefits from access to safe, effective, quality, and affordable medicines and pharmaceutical care. And the mission is FIP improves global health by supporting the advancement of pharmaceutical practice, sciences, and education. Here's a quick look at the FIP structure. Up at the top, we have the council that's made up of the bureau, and these groups are overarching with the Board of Pharmaceutical Sciences, made up of six SIGs, and the Board of Pharmaceutical Practice, which is made up of eight sections, and FIP Education, or FIP Ed. You can also see the groups of YPG, which we're representing today, and the Congress Program Committee, and all of these teams come together to create FIP. These are the sections of the Board of Pharmaceutical Practice, and YPG has a liaison from these um, sections to report back to YPG. So this is one opportunity that you can be involved in as a member is applying for these liaison positions um, and help bridge the gap between the sections and the YPG activities. The same thing goes for the special interest groups for the Board of Pharmaceutical Sciences. And again, there are six of them that are listed here for you. 
FIP Ed also has three groups, academic institutional membership, academic pharmacy section, and the workforce development hub, where there are also opportunities for YPG members to be involved. And we'll talk about that a little as we go along through the presentation today. These are the one FIP and FIP development goals. The FIP development goals were launched by FIP in September of 2020 and are a key resource for transforming the pharmacy profession over the next decade um, globally, but also regionally and nationally. They align with FIP's mission to support global health by enabling the advancement of pharmaceutical practice, sciences, and education, and are set to transform pharmacy in alignment with wider global imperatives, such as the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And having a set of one FIP development goals enables us to identify commonalities across all of FIP and bring together the areas of science, practice, and workforce and education. These goals help us make sure that FIP and YPG and all the various groups are working in a unified fashion towards a common purpose. Um, and you can see more about those development goals. There's a very nice website I did want to mention at developmentgoals.fip.org. Here you're looking at the FIP YPG structure. We're made up of a six-person steering committee that you can see to the left of your screen, and then our YPG subcommittee. Each steering committee member has a subcommittee um, group that reports to them. Um, and works closely with them throughout the year. Um, as I mentioned, the project subcommittee um, is what God's gift is serving on this year. So you can see from this list that um, there are numerous opportunities available to you um, to practice the tools that we're gonna discuss today um, as a member of YPG. Currently the FIP membership continues to grow we now have more than 1,300 members from more than 109 countries, um, and we're continuing this growth, and we saw more than 5% growth in 2021. We have uh, 43 subcommittee members approximately that are from 24 countries, so opportunities all around the globe. So now I'll be turning it over to God's gift to talk uh, about the Career Development Toolkit. There will be several QR codes that you'll see throughout the presentation. So you may wanna have your phone handy to be able to scan these. We will want you to follow along with us in the Career Development Toolkit and the Career Development Toolkit Workbook. If you're using your phone to view this webinar so you're, you're not able to scan the codes, you can take a quick screenshot of the codes to then use the picture to go back and visit the links later, or you could just rewatch this video at a later time um, as it is being recorded for you. So with that, I will turn it over to God's gift. Thank you so much, Amanda. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon from Nigeria. Um, thank you so much for the introduction. So we'll be going over to the Career Development Toolkit. As Amanda has earlier mentioned, please would like you to follow us. So if you could just quickly download the Career Development Toolkit, um, you can do that by scanning the picture on the screen, or you could just go to the chat box and download it via the link. So we'll just give a minute for that. If you downloaded it, you could just put a yes in the chat box. Also throughout the presentation, every time that you see a QR code, the link that goes along with it will also be put into the chat box um, in case you're not able to scan it. And I believe there are about five of those links that will be entered into the chat for you. All right. Once I see some responses here, we will go ahead. Okay. While we're waiting for everyone to get that downloaded, just a quick reminder, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to send those questions through um, the Q&A box. And when we get to that section at the end, we'll be happy to go through all of your questions.
All right, Amanda, I think we have quite a number of yeses. I think so too, so let's continue on. Okay. Okay, so you might be wondering, what is this career development toolkit all about? The career development toolkit was launched in the year 2020, and this was based on a research that was carried out by FIP YPG in order to identify the needs of YPG members globally. And also as a means in order for us to fill the gaps in soft skill development with the trends of pharmacy profession in today's world. So I'm um, looking at the screen, you could scan the QR code in order to have access to the report of the launch of the career development toolkit. You could also use the link in the chat box. Okay, so in this workbook, we're going to be looking at various job opportunities in pharmacy practices and pharmaceutical sciences. We're going to be looking at SWOT analysis, which stands for strengths, weakness, opportunities and threats, reflection templates, planning templates, um, about your CVs, cover letter writing, and the likes. You could also scan the QR code on the screen in order to assess what the workbook looks like. Okay, so what is in the toolkit? As Elia mentioned, there are over 100 career opportunities present in this toolkit. We also have the career development cycle, the global frameworks in order to support this career development that we're talking about, developing transferable skills, the activities that you can get involved in to develop your skills and expertise, as well as strategies for a successful career change. Okay, so um, additionally, you could go to the FIP's website. To choose young pharmacists, you could have access to various webinars previous webinars on the two. Kids, you could do that, okay. All right, so based on the various career opportunities, um, we're going to be looking at pharmacy practice, academia, industry, technology, management, government and regulatory, um, opportunities and all of these are present in the career toolkit. So as we go on, would you would um, have access to it? If you could go to page twenty six, since we already have downloaded it, you could go to page twenty six. Please, are we following? You could just put the yes in the chat box. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So, um, When you go to appendix, appendices, there are over 100. So I was able to identify 10 jobs that excite me. So this is like a mini assignment or classwork um, in order for you to identify the 10 jobs that excite you. So this is like the first step. So please, are we still following? Please, if you're following, just put in the chat box, yes. You can just put Y. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, I've seen a lot of yeses. So for me, I was able to identify 10 jobs that excite me and as displayed on the screen, pharmacy student mentor, travel medicine, pharmacist, education and training pharmacist. So you are also to do that. So that's why we asked you to download the two kits. And if possible, you should have a notebook or a notepad for it in order for you to jot this down because it's not just about having it in your head. You need to actually see it physically, like feel it. Okay, so some of the things I was able to identify in these roles include management, leadership, government, regulatory, communication, and academia. That was for mine. So yours could be different. Okay. All right, so I'll hand over to Amanda. All right, so hopefully you'll do that first activity um, in the toolkit to uh, get you thinking about what really excites you. Um, don't limit yourself to, you know, what you think you already are working in. Um, you know, read through that list of 100 jobs and really think about um, what gets you excited. And that will hopefully get your um get your mind in the right place. And then you can move to um, the second part of the second section of the toolkit, which focuses on the career development cycle. The career development cycle that we've presented in the toolkit um, is based upon the reflection, planning, action, and evaluation model. Within reflection, you have your SWOT analysis, which God's gift mentioned stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. There's a template in the workbook for that. There's also a reflection template. For the planning section, there's um, an explanation, an example of how to create SMART goals to uh, help you um, with the things that you may have recognized from your SWOT analysis. Then there's also a planning template that you can use with that. Under the action section, there's a record of learning template. We won't be giving you examples of that today, but um, hopefully in the time between this webinar and part two, um, you know, some of the actions that you do at school or in your job, you'll use that record of learning template to record those activities. Um, and then use the evaluation template, such as the evaluation learning template, evaluating your CV and evaluating your cover letter as well. Um, prior to part two of the workshop, and we'll come back and discuss those. For today, we're going to walk you through some examples of how to complete your SWOT analysis and create a SMART goal. So uh, um, the first step of reflection is looking at your SWOT analysis. So your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Um, and you may be able, you may be asked to do this by your employer, or you may just want to do this um, yourself as part of your development, you want to improve as you finish school or as you're looking to advance in your career. Maybe if you're looking for a promotion, um, you want to look for things that you can do to get better. So um, completing this can be kind of weird the first time. So we're going to walk through an example um, together. So this is an example, uh, maybe from a new graduate or a residency graduate. So the strength of pharmacy residency. Um, and with each strength, you should be able to find an opportunity. So the opportunity here after completing pharmacy residency, um, oh, we're gonna go to weaknesses. Also with your strengths, there, should, there may be an opposing weakness. So although you've completed your pharmacy residency, you've gotten a year of really good training, your weakness may be that you don't feel ready to practice completely independently. Um, and so also with your weaknesses, there should be um, a coordinating threat. Um, to go back to the strengths, your opportunity after completing residency is that you could work as a clinical pharmacy specialist. But if you don't feel ready to practice completely independently, um, that lack of confidence could prohibit you from making interventions. So this is just one. You could do up to five of these. Um, so again, as it, God's gift said, print out that workbook or print out the toolkit. And you really want to have these down in writing. It's one thing to go through them as a mental exercise, but totally another to put them down in writing and be able to continue to do that um, reflection, planning, action, and evaluation step. So really think about these and write them down. I think the toolkit recommends thinking back maybe to the last six month period or the last one year period. 
So after you've done your SWOT analysis and you found an I um, found an area for um, you know opportunities or threats or your weakness, you want to move to the next phase, which is going to be your planning phase. So here, based on the SWOT analysis, we're going to create a SMART objective or a SMART goal. SMART objectives should be specific, so tell you exactly what you want to be able to do. They need to be measurable. So how are you going to know once you have achieved it? Um, so something like, I want to be more productive or I want to learn more. Um, that's not very specific, but it's also not very measurable. Um, you want it to be achievable. Will you be able to do it or could other things impact it? Or is it just a very lofty goal that maybe at some point in your life you could be able to do, but not right now? Is it relevant? Is it applicable to your professional development or your current roles? And timely, when will you be able to achieve it? So again, there are several sections to this goal, so we're going to practice making one. So based on the previous SWOT analysis, the goal um, to make you more confident as a practitioner would be to become board certified. So the SMART goal is that I will become board certified in pediatrics within one year. So let's see if this meets the criteria of SMART objectives. So is it specific? Yes, there's a set objective. It's very clear what the goal is. It is something that's measurable. It's a pass or fail exam. So uh, you will definitely know if you've met your goal or not. It is achievable because the criteria um, for me to take the test have been met. Um, if the goal was, for example, to to become board certified in critical care, and I hadn't yet met the criteria to do that, you know, maybe I didn't have the amount of time practicing as a critical care pharmacist, or I didn't have that experience, that wouldn't be an achievable goal. And the purpose of SMART goals isn't to um, set unreachable lofty goals or to set ourselves up for, or up for failure. Um, so really wanting to make sure that it's achievable. Is it relevant? Yes, if you wanna practice as a clinical pharmacy specialist, then uh, you know, becoming board certified in pediatrics uh, would be relevant to you. And timely, yes, there's a time limit set. You wanna meet that goal within one year and it's possible to do that. So all these different criteria of the goal help make it a SMART goal. So hopefully you will also complete this activity in your workbook um, before joining us for part two. And you can share with us some of your SMART goals that you've created. Now we're gonna to go to the next section of the toolkit and briefly discuss the global frameworks to support your career development. There's two different frameworks. The first is the Global Competency Framework or GBCF. And this is to support your competency development um, to monitor your career development and performance. So the Global Competency Framework was created for those very early in their career. Maybe you're a new graduate or an early career pharmaceutical scientist. Um, and it's made up of four competency clusters that are gen generally applicable to the worldwide pharmacy workforce. Those clusters are pharmaceutical public health, pharmaceutical care, professional and personal, and organization and management. So the global competency framework can be used to help you track the actions that you're doing to progress through your career. And as you complete those competency actions more and more times and becoming more comfortable with them, you'll see that, you know, maybe you've completed all of these competencies or, um, you know, you're becoming much more comfortable in your role and developing that expertise. To go along with that, there's the global advanced development framework or the GADF. Um, which builds on the global competency framework to help you map and plan your professional development. Um, there are 34 competencies across six clusters in the GADF, and these clusters are expert professional practice, working with others, leadership, management and uh, education, training and development, and then finally, research and evaluation. Both the global competency framework and the global advanced development framework can be used to help you implement your reflection, planning, action, and evaluation steps of your career development.
All right, thank you, Amanda. Um, so still in the toolkit, there are various transferable skills and how to develop them. So while we were in pharmacy school, we were taught the seven star pharmacies, um, which includes manager, communicator, caregiver, decision maker, lifelong learner, leader, teacher. So for you to actually function effectively and efficiently, you require some skills. And these skills are 10 transferable skills, of which are very much present in the two kits. We have communication skills, negotiation skills, analytical skills, interpersonal skills, conflict resolution skills. Yes, it is a skill. Leadership skills, resilience, and then personal branding. So if you have no clue about how to go about these skills, how to develop it, or you'd like to work more on your skills, all of these are present in the toolkits from pages 26 to pages 43. And the exciting thing about it is that they're actually examples, they are case studies, people who actually have practiced it and you would get to learn from them, okay? All right, so there are various opportunities and programs within the FIP and FIPYPG. So we have the Leadership Development Program. It is a nine months virtual program organized by FIPYPG. And for you to be a part of this program, you need to apply. There's usually a call and this call for applications um, are usually posted on all our social media handles. Our social media handles will be posted towards the end of this, of this presentation. So just be on the lookout if you would like to develop your transferable skill via the leadership development program, we call it LDP. It is a very interesting session. Um, I'm currently enrolled in the program and it's really, really interesting. Then there's also the leadership development workshop. Um, this is usually a fiscal event and it's usually held during the FIP Congress. So if you'll be attending the FIP Congress, please do well to participate in that. Um, when you talk about communication skills too, um, you can work on your communication skills by being a part of the FIPYPG subcommittee. Um, you get to send emails, you get to have meetings, and that's where somehow, somehow you're able to develop your skills. Then we also have the remote volunteering program. So those of us who are interested in volunteering, most times the program is a virtual one, so you can volunteer from any part of the world, and you get to develop your skills, even if you don't have the skills, in, it depends on how you apply. If you apply and you put, oh, I'm, I'm very willing to learn, there are opportunities for you to volunteer. And the link will be posted in the chat box if you'd like to volunteer with FIP YPG. So this is also to notify us that there are some activities in section five of the Career Development Toolkit. So CDT stands for Career Development Toolkit. And then we'll be discussing these activities in the next session. We're going to have a part two of this um, workshop. So there'll be breakout rooms for us to critically discuss all of these. So be on the lookout. And please make sure you do this assignment. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so some other activities are the mentorship program. So there's also a mentorship program for um, all young, pharmacist or early career pharmacist. Um, if you're having challenges, trying to find your path, trying to even change your career and the likes. So FIPYPG also calls for young pharmacists to apply. And this is usually posted also on all social media platforms. You have to be a member of FIPYPG for you to participate in this. Um, for you to be a member, you need to apply as you go to www.fip.org. The link could also be posted in the chat box. Okay, so we have other trainings and certifications, one of which is the Curriculum Pharmacies for the Future program, is one that enables you to know your skills and develop your skills. Then we also have the Career Development Workshop Part 2, which we have talked about in the previous slide. So you get to network, and then you also get to network in the FIP Congress, which will be coming up in September. This is just one of many events in which you can actually develop your skills. Okay, next slide, please.
So there are some activities in which YPG is involved, FIP activities. Um, I know Amanda Ella mentioned it, but just to reemphasize, there's the FIP WISE program. WISE stands for Women in Science program. And we have the FIP COVID-19 Information Hub, FIP Digital Program Transforming Vaccination Globally and Regionally. We have the one FIP Global Pharmaceutical Observatory, and we also have the workforce. So you could actually um, develop your skills. You could actually um, get new skills by being involved in any of these activities. Okay. So the last section in the career development toolkit is about strategies for a successful career change. What we really want to highlight here is that the career development toolkit is not only for those who are new graduates or about to start their career. Um, it's really applicable to anyone who, you know, is trying to continue to develop their career, continue to grow. Maybe you're looking for a career change or want to work as a different type of pharmacist, a different practice area. All of these things are still applicable. So what we'd like for you to do is complete the activities um, within the toolkit. And then during part two of the webinar, as has been mentioned, um, there will be times for you to, um, you know, share your SWOT analysis or your SMART goals, um, but then also we'll be um, joining up in breakout rooms to, um, to practice some of these communication and negotiation skills to work through some of the case studies. Um, and so that'll be a great time for you to network and also practice these skills. And then we'll also talk about strategies for a successful career change after you've had time to work through um, the sections of the toolkit. So here is the link for part two. Um, this is a Zoom link. So on Tuesday, September 13th, um, at the same time as the webinar today, We'll join together again, um, bring your completed toolkits, questions, and be ready to um, discuss with colleagues, other YPG members that will join us um, three weeks from now. We thought that would be um, a great amount of time for you to be able to review these things, um, complete the activities, and then come back and join us again. Um, if you have friends and coworkers that you think would um, enjoy this, please be sure to let them know that this webinar today was recorded. So if they weren't able to join, um, they can definitely go back and watch this webinar, um, do the toolkit and still be prepared to join us for part two. Also, um, if you uh, remember, we, po we showed you, you know, going to the FIP library, changing your drop downs to young pharmacist um, and previous, We'll show you all of the previous uh, work webinars that have been presented about the Career Development Toolkit. We have the global launch that God skipped mentioned. There was a code for that, but also each of the six sections of the webinar or of the toolkit have had their own very detailed webinar with guest speakers and different experts. And so you can go back and really do a deep dive into each section and the background of those sections of the toolkit, have that information available. Um, what we wanted to do today was really give you some examples and help you um, see practically how to start filling out that workbook. So hopefully you'll take all of these resources and everything together to complete your workbook and then come back and join us in a few weeks. As a final reminder, please join us at FIP Congress. Registration is still open. We would love to see you all there and network with you further. Um, and also be on the lookout. A call for the leadership development workshop that we mentioned is going to be reopened. We do have a few spots left for that. And we would love for every single one of them to be filled so that um, you guys can really get that great experience. If you have any questions about the leadership development workshop, please um, reach out. Our email address will be posted at the end. These are all of our social media handles. We have Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Um, as God's gift mentioned, we post all of our calls for different leadership positions, um, for remote volunteering program. Um, sometimes the remote volunteering program 
um, is a very quick turnaround. They need a volunteer within like the week. Um, and so one of those QR codes or links that was posted earlier will take you to an interest form for the remote volunteer program. That way you can tell us um, timeframes that you are available, things that you are interested in, and go ahead and give us access to your CV and your motivation letter. Um, and that way, when we have a very rapid turnaround and we don't have time to release a call, um, we can look at the list of people who have been interested and see who is um, qualified for that position and reach out and see if it's something that you'd be interested in. So um, if you think you might want to do remote volunteering, please fill out that interest form for us um, so that when those things roll around, we'll be able to contact you. Finally, thank you for joining. Again, here is the QR code um, that will take you to the page to become a member of, of FIP if you're not already. Um, this is the YPG email account. If you have any comments, questions, concerns um, about today, please reach out. We'd be happy to help you. Um, and I think now we can take questions. Yes. Um, so the first question is to volunteer for the remote volunteering program. Do you need to be a member of FIP? Um, yes, you must be a member of FIP for the remote volunteering program um, because you will be helping with FIP activities. So we do ask that you do that um, by joining FIP. You have so many benefits. Um, there's the curriculum program. Like God's gift mentioned, you get access to the huge FIP library that is full of all the previous webinars, um, all the different reports and surveys and things that um, FIP publishes. They're all very good quality um, resources for you. So um, a lot of benefits of being an FIP member and also definitely take advantage of it while we are still the early career pharmacists. Um, and we do get a, um, a little bit of a lower membership rate initially in our career. So you do have to be a member for that. Um, also things that you may see coming up on social media, um, YPG will be changing the name to Early Career Pharmacist Group to be um, more inclusive and more reflective of our members. And so um, if you see social media things starting to change from YPG to ECPG, um, it's still us. We're just updating our name to, um, to stay current. So um, we have another question here. Um, is there a membership fee? Yes, there is a membership fee um, to become an FIP member. Let me check the chat also and see um, if there are questions here. Um, is the, yes, the remote volunteer program is listed on the website. There's not currently um, a link to the webinar, or I'm sorry, a link to the interest form on the internet, um, but we have posted it here in the chat for you and on the QR codes. Um, and then you'll also be able to go back and watch this presentation um, and scan that code as well. Also in the chat, um, there's a link for the latest FIP World Congress news and updates via the newsletter. We'll give it just a couple more minutes for questions. God's gift, do you have anything that you would like to add? I'm not even now. All right. We'll give it just a moment for questions, and then I think we can wrap it up. Um, and I hope that you will all join us back for um, part two. So um, we do expect part two, like we mentioned, to be um, very engaging, um, you know, cameras on, networking and talking with other people. So I think it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. I think we have some questions. Yes, um, are students allowed to join YPG? Um, yes, students are allowed to join YPG. And a certificate of attendance um, should be sent out today and answers being typed in there for you now.
All right. Well, I think we will go ahead and wrap it up for today. I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of your day and thank you for joining us. All right, thank you.